My name is Mr. Anderson, and I am talking to the 24,612 subscribers to our site, fans of comic books, fans of amazing stuff. Mr. Anderson, and you I can hear my voice. <laughs> We're getting 612 subscribers to our site, fans of We just went live on it, that's fans why. Fans of amazing stuff. There we go. We get, we'll get rid of the... You only need one of me. Fans of the amazing is definitely right. So we're going to get into the Kickstarter talk. And always, you guys want to know how to get to a Kickstarter, you can even go to Kickstart these Kickstarters in our menu and back them now or never is our little section which lets you know what's going on and what's going off very quickly. If it's in there, you want to back it sooner than later. And just as a heads up for you guys, the dates, don't look at the year, but look at the date, the month and the date, and that will tell you when that Kickstarter comes off of Kickstarter. Well, the year is off because that's how we keep it in the chronological order that we do. And this week we have The Adventures of Parker Reef. Spelling Cthulhu is challenging for a gate crosser, but Dara, T-Man, Hyperstrike, and Guy can handle it. And obviously I put gate wrong, so we're going to have to fix that at the end of the program. But this is Kickstarter Talk, and supporting Kickstarters only takes a single dollar. It shows support, attracts attention, health funds, projects, supports creators, and creates new worlds. And more importantly, it stops the reboot culture. And if you're going to build a Kickstarter, why not learn from the best? Get Kickstarter for the Independent Creator, second additional practical in front of God to crowdfunding, written by the amazing Madeline Holly Rising and illustrated by Christian Shin. If you want to know how to do your Kickstarter right, this is your one and only stop. And now... For the Kickstarters. On the program today, we'll have Cthulhu is Hard to Spell, The Adventures of Parker Reef, Crosser's Gate, The Changeling, Dara, Queen of Thieves, T Man and Hyperstrike, Gowano Guy, 100 Days, Franklin and Ghost, Ruby and the Warriors of Dion, Sane Six, Suicide Prevention, Superhero Leap. Realm of Spirits, Listen, Listen, Into the Suck, Diamond Rope, Diamond Rope, Die Like Dying, Not Killing, but Dying Something of Color, Jolly Jane, Light Earth, Light Chasers, The Gathering Volume 1, Harpies New to the Program, Mississippi Zombie, Michael Metlin's Kane Number 3 is officially launched, you guys are going to be able to kickstart Fetishism Tales number one as of October 1st. I'll show you an exclusive video. And uh, we're going to have my friend's book, Geek Girl. This is Sam Johnson's amazing book. It's coming out also on October 1st. And on October 2nd, Matthew Basil is going to have Wolf's Howlman. That's going to be October 2nd. So... That is what's going to be on the show today. We're going to go all the way up so quickly. Close your eyes real quick. It's zooming up to the top, and we're going to start off with Cthulhu is Hard to Spell with just hours remaining. Do you love Lovecraft? 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 Hi, I'm Russell Nolte, creator of Ichabod Jones Monster Hunter, Katrina Hates the Dead, Pixie Dust, and editor of the Monsters and Other Scary-ish Anthology, and I'd like to introduce you to my new anthology, Cthulhu is Hard to Spell. If you love Lovecraft, this is your jam. So here's where this anthology is different. There are dozens, maybe hundreds, of Lovecraftian horror anthologies out there. I didn't want to make another one. What I wanted to do was make an anthology that was unlike anything <laughs> I've ever seen before. What I wanted to do is show dozens of gods and monsters. I wanted to show you not just scary gods and monsters, but also cute ones, sci-fi ones, fantasy ones, cosmic ones, outer gods, elder gods, and everything in between. I went out and filled this book with tons of amazing creators, creators who've worked for Marvel, DC, Oni, Tokyo Pop, Heavy Metal, Fantagraphics, Upper Deck, Sony, and on brands like Teen Titans, My Little Pony, Invader Zim, Ghostbusters, Horizon Zero Dawn, and much, much more. Now here's the deal. This book is 100% done. I could hit distribute right now if I wanted to, but I don't want to do that. What I want is to print this book, just like our first anthology, Monsters and Other Scary-ish, 
which was 224 pages of awesome monster goodness. And we were able to raise $27,000 for this on high quality glossy art paper in glorious hardcover. And that's what I wanna do with our new book, Cthulhu is Hard to Spell. So if you wanna see an amazing Monsters and Gods version of a Cthulhu Lovecraft anthology, then all you have to do is pledge. Not too hard. Pretty simple. All you gotta do is pledge. I like that. I dig it. I dig the idea. Time's running out. Make sure you guys jump on this. I'm gonna warn you, this is gonna be a heavy video, but it's an important one to watch. This is about supporting a fellow creator. It's about making sure that creativity can trump tragedy. Hey, thanks so much for coming and checking out the Kickstarter for the Adventures of Parker Reef, a uh, new book that I'm writing and drawing now. Um, I'll just cut right to it. Uh, the book is an extremely, extremely personal project. Um, for those who know what happened, uh, you know why. Uh, for those who don't, on March 14th of this year, Wednesday, I lost my girlfriend and our son. So uh, for months, and even today, I don't know what to do with myself, but I know that I have to write and draw this book. Um, Parker, our son, was named after a comic book character, a certain guy who shoots webs. And uh, my whole job has been drawing comics for as long as I can remember. And it was the thing that Tana, my girlfriend, probably loved about me the most, the fact that I followed my dream. So this book is a tribute to her and her belief in me and to the son that I never got to really meet. So the way the book works is um, Parker and Tana are where you go when you pass and years have gone by and he has chosen as his birthday wish a very special special wish and that is to spend a day with me in the land of the living so tana over the years knew that this was a possibility and you know when things go missing within your house like pencils and keys and socks and all that kind of stuff. Tana has taken certain things from my studio in our house and slowly taught him about me and my life and, and who I am. So he's going to take some of those things, most importantly being the pencil from my studio, because that pencil holds everything I've ever drawn. And in his adventure, he'll be able to use that pencil to draw the things he needs to get to where he needs to get to, which is ultimately, hopefully, to me. Now the adventure part, well, he's a soul, and that soul is trying to get somewhere. And people want to take control of certain souls. And if he fails to get to me, the soul is lost forever. While on his way, he will encounter creatures, other lost souls, tormented souls, demons, adventures, obstacles, all that kind of stuff. Uh, any son of mine is gonna go on the coolest, greatest adventure anyone can go on. So, um, I wanna do this book for people who have lost children, loved ones. I think it's important, it has to be done, and uh, I know that Tana would want me to do it. And in all honesty, it's the only way while I'm here that I'll have them again. So I have to do it. And if it helps other people who have lost, it's amazing. And she would love that. So that's it. Hopefully the artwork uh, that is in the video tells you more than clearly I'm stating right now. Uh, thank you so much for always supporting my projects this one especially.
please support it and share it. Um, I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Now that's, I mean, I want to go hug my son. It's, it's that kind of powerful 389 people have been part of this amazing journey for this. It's got 48 hours, $18,000 raised. I can't wait till this is a graphic novel fully completed and just allowing him to explore and, and grieve. And I don't know what else to say because it's, it's a difficult one. So we're going to move on to Crosser's Gate. Hey everybody, it's Shane here from Crimson Gate Comics, the creator of Beast King. I'm here today because we are bringing you another Kickstarter for my illustrator, Travis Martinez. This is his very own series called Crosser's Gate. And basically it's a suspenseful horror thriller type of series. And what it does is it plays on the many aspects of fear. And the main character, Alien, is a guy that gets pulled into another world and it's like a crazy twisted version of our world and basically it's about him trying to escape in the first issue and the second issue is more about just him trying to figure out what in the world is going on and personally i think this is a really good series which is why i publish it for my illustrator trevis and when i first read it was pretty much when i first ever hired trevis to illustrate beast king for me and he used it as a reference and pretty much i love the series so much that i told him i would publish it for him so if you like this if you like beast king you'll probably like crosser's gate and i hope you decide to back this awesome comic book thank you very much everyone all right moving on the changeling is into the lungs of hell volume one it funded in 32 minutes. My God, what a runaway. There is no video, so we don't have much to show. We can give you the heads up, but Dara has a video, and I know I'm saying that wrong, so we're going to find out right now how to pr properly say it. Take it away, my friend, Sean Delaney. Hey, everyone. This is Sean Delaney, and I'm here to tell you about the Kickstarter for Drea, Queen of Thieves, issue number two. Now, of course, issue number two follows issue number one of Drea, Queen of Thieves, where we reprinted the stories that appeared in Digital Webbing Presents number 12 and 22. Now, with the second issue, we will be reprinting the story that appeared in Digital Webbing Presents number 26, as well as a follow-up story that only appeared in this little ash can uh, copy of the book. It will be full color, and we hope you will take part in our journey to bring you more adventures of the Queen of Thieves. She's essentially uh, Snow White as Robin Hood, or as our uh, former colorist described her, Red Sonia meets Indiana Jones. So check it out. It's Drea, Queen of Thieves, here on Kickstarter. It's a pretty good tagline, if I have to do say so myself. I love that. Robin Hood were Snow White. Just let that sink in for a minute, the amazingness of that elevator pitch. Wow is all I can say. Some good art in it, too. Check, Take a look at that. Only, only a couple days left. You guys are sleeping on this one. You got to get part of this. I don't know why you're sleeping on it, either. You guys got to do better. Got to do better. You got to get on it. Get on it, kids. All right. We're going to move on to T-Man and Hyper Strike. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Fish from MrFishComics.com and Tourette's Life on Facebook. I was coming to you to let you know about a brand new comic book that I'm doing. I'm launching a Kickstarter for it. The comic book is T-Man and Hyper Strike. T-Man is the towering teal titan of Tourette Syndrome. He's tied into the cosmic T-Force that ties every single one of us with Tourette Syndrome together. It's that power coursing through our bodies that gives us extra creativity, faster reflexes, makes us smarter, more creative, better musicians, better artists, all those things. That's what makes us so awesome. And all that extra awesomeness being burned off in our bodies where all the ticks come from. 
So he's tied into this force, and he's got the ability to tap into everybody's power with Tourette syndrome. He has the combined strength of all the athletes in the world with Tourette syndrome. He has a combined speed of every runner from playgrounds to the Olympics with Tourette syndrome. He's got the creativity, the brilliance of all the wonderful minds with Tourette syndrome, which makes him nearly an unstoppable hero. He's not a he's not a special needs hero. He's not a disabled hero. He is a amazing hero and a pantheon of heroes, equal to no other. And his partner in this, not his sidekick, not his assistant, not his daughter, not his girlfriend, his partner in this is Hyperstrike, the hyperactive hero. She's an amazing person that has ADHD. And she's focused all that extra energy into studying Taekwondo, Kung Fu, Karate, all the martial arts, Krav Maga. She's become an amazing hand-to-hand -hand martial artist. And she's an amazing engineer and scientist. She's designed and built this suit of armor that lets her focus all the extra energy in her body and power her suit with it. It lets her fly. It lets her run at super speed. It makes her strong. She can blast energy blasts. If she doesn't have the ability now, I guarantee you she can build it into that suit quickly. Our goal on this Kickstarter is to raise enough money to bring the printing costs way down so that anybody that wants a copy of Team Man and Hyperstrike in the future will be able to easily afford it and to get the extras printed to help do the incentives and whatnot, and then shipping. I'm not trying to get rich on this thing. I'm not trying to make a million dollars. I'm just trying to make sure that I got the printing covered and I can be sure to ship this to anybody who wants to get a copy of it, whether it's a single copy or a pack for classrooms so that everybody can get a copy of the comic and a wristband and remind them to tick loud and proud. So... That's what we're trying to reach with this Kickstarter, a simple goal. Share this with all your friends. Get the word out. Somebody that shares either this post from Kickstarter or shares this post from my Facebook page with Tourette's Life might actually win the opportunity to get their face in the comic book. That would be awesome. It's one of those people that, that he's getting his creativity from, getting his brilliance, his strength, whatever it needs to be. Somebody's going to get the chance to get their face in the comic book. And there's lots of different levels that you can pledge at. From a digital copy of the comic, I can email anywhere in the world so all of our foreign friends can get a copy, to regular printed out copies with a wristband that tells you to tick loud and proud, all the way up to being able to get the comic in an awesome tick loud and proud t-shirt just like this one. So get in there, find the best way that you can help get this out there, donate and share. Thank you guys for your help. God bless you and tick loud and proud. All right, man. I give a lot of credit, man. I'm a, I have hyperactivity, and a lot of people joke about hyperactivity. But I'll tell you to this date in my life, it does affect me, and it does affect me in a very profound way. There are things that I have to do. I tell people very often that I won't even drink because it really affects my hyperactivity badly. And, you know, people try to give you excuses and want you to drink with them, and they just don't get it. Uh it is not something that's easy to deal with. So a lot of credit for him, man. The positivity in that, he's so awesome. Speaking of awesome, check out the awesome creator himself, Gawana Guy. Hey, I'm Mark Jordan, the writer creator of Gawana Guy. It's an indie book that's been going on for a while now. And most recently, I successfully funded the fifth issue. It was a 40 page double. But I thought, hey, everybody didn't see it. Maybe there's some people on Indiegogo that would like to get a set of the books. So with five issues available, I'm putting it up on Indiegogo. I've got it available as a PDF set of five books. There's a print set. And, of course, there's a print and PDF set, which also comes with some extras, with some stickers and some prints. And the fifth issue has a double cover. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, if you happen to like comedy superheroes with sarcastic language, references to culture, and a lot of witty battles, and maybe not so much of the fisticuffs, this might be a book that you really enjoy. So please, give me a chance. Check out my Indiegogo campaign. See if you might want to set. And I'd love to get it to you. Again, my name is Mark Darn. Thanks for checking out my video. Mark's a great guy. I've gotten to panel with him a whole bunch of times. It's just a super good dude. Speaking of super good dude, Austin uh, is one of those Sir, good dudes. Here he is. My name is Austin Hamlet. Today I'm here to talk to you about my project, 100 Days. Uh, 100 Days is inspired by a Kickstarter that I stumbled onto a couple years ago by Justin Barber, and I might have said his last name wrong. I apologize if I do. Where for 100 consecutive days, he had to write at least 100 words 
every day about any topic is kind of more like a personal memoir. So I decided to do the same myself as a writer. Uh, this is my first foray, let me use the big word, uh, into personal narratives. I m mainly write comic books, uh, which I've written several of the Adventures of Punk and Rock, have the set man, Steel Wool, self-published small press stuff you probably never heard of, and that's okay. I've barely heard of it, and I wrote it. Uh, I talk about many different topics all over this. Talk about uh, God, my views on God, professional wrestling. I talk about comic books. I talk about getting caught masturbating by two Jehovah's Witnesses when I was 12. I don't claim to have a filter, and so when I'm talking to people anyway, so this book is definitely like that. I think my fiance would probably be, when she reads it, if she reads it, will probably wish I wouldn't talk about some of the things that I did, but I'm a very open person. Uh, I'm very proud that I did this. This was, was a, a pretty big learning experience for me. Uh, I am broke as fuck right now. I know that's probably not the correct way to do this video, but I mean, that's just how I am. I'm a fucking turtle's hoodie looking stoned as fuck, and I've actually only ever smoked weed once. Cover that in the book. Uh, but I need somebody to, uh, you know, to get the book up on Amazon, get an ISBN purchase. Uh, I've hired an editor to go over my grammar because my grammar sucks ass. And um, it's the other thing, grammar it's, and uh, punctuation to go over that, uh, as well as, you know, paint the logos and the cover art. So I've got several different awards, uh, varying from a print copy of the book, digital copy of the book, to various other things that I've worked on in print and digital editions, as well as uh, a one-hour Skype session with me where I can help you go over writing or marketing plan. Uh, I ran two successful campaigns in the past. And everybody got their stuff. Uh, with this, everybody will get their stuff. Everybody will get it fast. Uh, self-published enough in the past that this is actually far easier to self-publish than a comic book or a deal with art and stuff and sizing. But uh, th this project's done. Uh, by the end of the campaign, the book should be edited. I get the money to the editor, and I knew my cat would come. Hi, Toby. One of them. Uh, and uh, I just need, just need some money to get this project going. You know, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. Uh, and I really appreciate you to those of you who watch at this point because there's probably none of you. But thanks anyways. Uh, Wubba love dub dub. Uh, you got to admire the honesty. Because not everyone can be that honest where they are. So I appreciate Austin. I appreciate his honesty. All right, guys, let's check out. Oops. Franklin and Ghost. Oh, Franklin and Ghost didn't have a video that we could play. That's right. So Franklin and Ghost, Live Free or Fox uh, Fox Hard. It's now available on Kickstarter. It's a 60-page graphic novel by Garrett Gunn and Nicholas Torres. With aliens, spaceships, and general fuckery. Join the fuckery on Kickstarter by clicking here. Ruby and the Warriors of Dion 2. Again, not one we can play. It's an epic fantasy about a young mage on a quest for vengeance. Here is Sane 6, and I did not check this video, so we might have to stop it at a point. Let's see it's on. This is a really great video, so check it out. Hi guys, welcome to my Kickstarter. It's just like the you from here. My leap is all about. Uh, Sound a little nervous. Leap is all about. 
what suicide does to the, to those around the individual who commits suicide. Um, I originally started creating the league when I had lost my teacher to suicide. Um, it was a year later when I started the comic book because I, ha I didn't really go through the process of grief the way others may have. And I had locked it all up inside and it didn't, it didn't really come out of me until I went away from the army for basic. Um, and when that happened, I just, I had all this emotion that was kind of attached from everything that I was keeping it all in me, all my support channels and technology and what have you. So in basic, I, it just all poured out of me, all this emotion and all my feelings towards my teacher and his death and how I was feeling about it. Um, Leap is all about really preventing more suicides and bringing awareness to the stigma of mental health and suicide. I essentially just made it to, originally it was just for me. It was just to get all this emotion out of me without really confiding in people that I didn't really know yet, basic. But it became so much more, it became more apparent to me that I needed to be so much more. When I realized so much more people are going through this process, um, a little bit more about my teacher, uh, Patrick J. Mulvaney, committed suicide back in 2015. In that year, I was also suicidal. Um, my suicidal tendencies almost got the best of me. Uh, I had Gotten off work late one night and I had went to the train tracks. Mind you, a train had just passed and I did not realize that was the last train of the night. Um, so I, there was a little footbridge to get to the train tracks over a trench of some sort. And I went to walk over there and end my life. I waited there probably about an hour before I got on a call from a friend and they realized I was crying and I had let loose all that, you know, all that was going on. Um, luckily that day I didn't kill myself, obviously, because I'm still here. Um, but it felt like part of me had died that day. Um, and I, and I mentioned this because part of the reason why I held on was motivated. Part of the reason why I held on was my sisters. It was part, part of the reason was all these things. I didn't want to die. That's the thing. No one wants to die when they commit suicide. They want the, the payback. And that's something we have to get across with the stigma. This comic is going to help destigmatize everything. Um, it's, it's another thing about it is we need to understand how to approach these situations. Another, t another instance in uh, 2015, we were, I was sitting at lunch and there's this kid named Danny. And he, Danny had hearing aids. So he, we, uh, we kind of joke around with him about it. And during one day, I guess the jokes were a little bit too much where he took it the wrong way. And he, he shouts and says, God, that's why I want to kill myself two days ago. Entire table went silent. No one knew exactly what to say or do, including myself, someone who a few months prior was contemplating suicide and was starting to feel better. My, my, my self-esteem and all that started getting a little bit better. And those who go through these experiences want to help others. So I didn't necessarily know what to do in that instance. Um, that being said, nothing happened. I didn't do anything about it until a few days later where I had to ask him if he was okay, but he was better. Luckily, Danny did not kill himself. Now, with my teacher, the day before he killed himself, I had talked to him. He seemed off. Um, they always talk about warning signs when it comes to suicide. So he had definitely seemed... Me. He uh, 
he definitely seemed off to me. He had, I had asked him if he was okay. He responds with, just insomnia. With those words, I believed him due to the energy drinks and coffees he had at his desk. Now, I tell you this because I wish I didn't believe him for his words that day. Because the very next day he did end up killing himself. This comic is to honor him and all those that have died from suicide. And not only them, but the survivors of the victim of suicide. Because we have to carry around this this part of us that kind of died the, the day those individuals died. And it doesn't sit well. Um, it's definitely an experience that I don't wish on anyone, but I wish to help others through my experience. Things that you can expect with this comic book is to destigmatize mental health and suicide. Um, the first issue is mainly all about suicide and suicide prevention and grief and loss. Um, it definitely will dig deeper in the series overall because it's not going to be one issue. It's going to be an entire series as long as I'm able to roll it out and have enough interest. Now, with that being said, um, I need your help. I need your help to get this launched. We need this to be a thing. Therefore, we can destigmatize mental health and suicide. Um, the, a little bit about the book itself. Um, Patrick, who is the, the superhero, uh, named in memory of Patrick J. Mulvaney. He, the, the story starts about a year later where he's feeling all this emotion and it's still, it's still relevant to him that, you know, suicide, I'm sorry, Selena's suicide, which was his fiance, was still an everyday thing for him. Um, and through the combo, the first issue, you see him going through this grieving process where he's still struggling with all this anger inside. Um, he has a best friend named Heather, who is also um, Selena's best friend. Um, so I'm still a little bit nervous. Heather helps Patrick combat this on day to day level. And despite her help, Patrick still needs an outlet. So he turns to become a superhero because he realizes this isn't just something that he had to deal with with his loved one. It's something that his city needs it's a, he his city needs a hero to help prevent suicides because it's such a prevalent issue in his city not only in his city but the world um as i said i would really appreciate all your support in this project and to help get it launched and get it where it needs to be um i apologize this isn't as formal as some videos might be. I uh, get a little camera shy. Um, but that's generally it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for watching and please support and share this Kickstarter. Suicide, oh, <laughs> Suicide Prevention Superhero Week. Thank you and have a great day. Now, I've said it since watching it. I think that's one of the bravest videos I've ever seen done. That's just my opinion. On it. I honestly think that is hands down one of the bravest videos I have ever seen. Let's check out this very cool video next. I know short but sweet.
Sometimes it's good. We got some more art for it. A couple seconds, so hang in. It's not over yet. I know who you are. I've been hunting you ever since you left your burning village. I've been hunted too. He said his name was. I am Tiroka. I wish there was a little more content in it because it looks so great. I've gotten to see parts of it. I've gotten to watch it come together. I wish they talked about it more because it is very cool. Speaking of very cool, let's listen to listen. Moves live happily ever after in Shamanai. Hi there. I'm just trying to read a book without pictures. Yeah, it's not as good as a picture book, but you know, well, it's not a picture book. You know, speaking of picture books, I have a new book coming out. It's called. As I was saying, I have a new book coming out, and it's called. Guys, I think he's over that way. Okay, I have a new book coming out, and it's called Listen. Listen is about a mismatch family that learns to love one another by simply listening. It's actually about those guys over there. I'd love to share the full story with you, but. Well, that's why I'm doing this Kickstarter, because I need to raise the money so I can publish and do all that other fun business stuff that you have to do before you put a book out. <laughs> now, say I went over what I was asking for, and you guys were just like loving all my stuff and just giving me all this money. Say that happened. Well, I have a bunch of other books that I'm working on. I also have a book that I'm in the middle of right now about a duck. Right. Yeah. If you support me, you'll get a bunch of cool goodies, like a signed copy of the book, some awesome art, and some other neat little things. So ultimately what I'm asking is that you find it in your heart to support my art. kind of cool right speaking of looking good into the suck is back number three of course this is from keith thomas this is his legacy book fantastic book gonna have something cool with this coming out soon can't wait to talk about it gotta check it out man it is out of this world so get into the suck by clicking here and diamond rope so everyone knows who i am and if you don't Sorry, I dropped some. <laughs> if you don't know who I am, I'm the creator of Fetish Babies. That's right. The story of a young woman's journey through the New York City Fetish Underground, which is going to Kickstarter soon. I know. I'm excited, too. You guys are going to be able to help me get that funded as a trade. Now, I ran into this. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about the noise. I ran into this amazing creator of colorful ropes. I absolutely love it. I have it with me for anyone who wants to come see me in Baltimore, New York Comic Con, so you can feel it yourself. I like the colorful ropes. It, it, it attracts my ADHD. It's not your average Kickstarter, obviously, and it's definitely for those into tying people up, or maybe you want to do something colorful. Maybe you like arts and crafts and you need rope. Sure, that's what you need it for. So <laughs> it is available. You can get it now. 
Um, and it is something that I approve of. So if that carries any water, that'll get you to back that amazing rope. And it really is amazing rope for anyone who is trying to maybe spice up their love life and add some fire back into the bedroom, which I hate when people say that, honestly, because it's not that simple. But if you are into the fetish scene or into BDSM at home, this is the perfect rope for you. All right. So moving on to Jolly Jane, created by Russ Rollins and Jeff Kaufman. Hey, I'm Russ Rollins. You might know me from the Monsters of the Morning on Real Radio 104.1 or iHeartRadio. I've been doing that for 26 years. I wrote a book, but this is my first graphic novel. And I came to Big City Comics with Jeff Kaufman, who's written many graphic novels. And we worked on this together. And meet Jolly Jane. You are going to love this graphic novel. She's terrible. She's a 28-year-old paramedic who gets possessed by a serial killer while being on a ghost tour in Massachusetts. This is a real famous killer named Jolly Jane who killed over 100 people while dressed as a nurse. It is frightening. It is disgusting. It's keeping me up at night. It's awesome. And being a part of the Kickstarter now, thank you very much. There's so many opportunities for so many cool things if you help us with this Kickstarter. Matter of fact, you can actually be in the book. We can even kill you in the book. Oh, we are going to kill you in the book if you pay for it. You know, we're easy. <laughs> and the artwork is done by Ken Hunt. He has done so many PC comic covers. He's amazing. He's also doing the interior. This book looks so great. It's beyond my wildest dreams. I'm going to thank Jeff Coppin for making it come true. He's written many graphic novels. Is this your favorite? Oh, it is my favorite. It's it's told in a way, you know, normally I, I'm alone in Starbucks doing what I'm doing. But this time, when you're sitting at a table duking it out with somebody over every word, we argue about the uh, about the the, the dialogue. But colorful it, metaphors. It colorful turned metaphors. out awesome. Thank you, and thank you for being a part of this. You can be a part of what's going to be the next big superhero serial killer in the comic book world, Jolly Jane. Oh, also I forgot to mention James Brown, who colors Transformers and GI Joe, is also our color. Enjoy. Thanks. I mean, come on. Who doesn't love a serial killer to come over? All right. Maybe you don't love a serial killer coming over. I could see why that could be a turnoff. But it certainly is an interesting concept. It's like if Chucky hadn't gotten into a doll but gotten into a hot babe. I like it. Speaking of liking things, check out my boys, J.R. Blanton's Light Earth. Hi everyone, I am J.R. Blanton. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am the writer and the creator and the owner of the Light Earth series from No Gravity Studios. This is another campaign. This time we're collecting the zero through three issues of the Light Earth series into a sleek trade paperback. And we've got some incredible covers this time. Uh, Jesse Wickman, Matt Haley, Matt, Mike DeBalfo. Uh, and, and you know what the best part is? All these covers this time are going to be available in Chrome. And I can just tell you from... Getting a couple of them. Oh, yeah, here's one from the last one. Look at that. Look at that chrome. I would take it out and give you a better example, but I, it's the only one I have, and I really don't want to get it messed up. But uh, we already have everything all set up. The book is ready to go. It's finished. We're going to send this thing right to print. I mean, we're probably talking less than three months of wait time for you guys, and we're going to get it to you as soon as possible. And like I said, everything's going to be available in Chrome. If you want to hit the early birds up, go ahead and hit those. You get a discount on a lot of those things, and we're going to be happy to hopefully see a success. So thank you guys for your support, and hopefully we will be getting this to you soon. I love the energy of that, man. Just absolutely contagious. Sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze. <laughs> Light Chasers number two, design and edition. Looks fantastic. You guys got to check it out. It's got a cool video. We can't play it because of copyright issues. And in this one case, they actually had the copyright for the copyright, but it would not transfer to us. How much does that suck? Speaking of suck, and imagine if a meteor fell down on the outskirts of New York, bringing a deadly alien threat inside with the art with the art from Marvel artist K. K Burl. Looks amazing. you got to check it out. Give a chance for The Gathering, Volume 1. Here is the Harpies, number one, and... We're going to play the music low. I don't think it's copyrighted. It's like a 50-50 on this one. I couldn't get it. Shazam pulled it up, but I couldn't actually get it to pull up one song. I pulled up three songs. So here's hoping that we don't get into too much shit playing it. This is a little more adult from coming out from uh, Marcel Dupree, who's been 
veering into the more adult books lately. He said he's just giving people what they wanted. guys if you like 1920s history this is probably gonna be interesting to you definitely interesting mississippi zombie another unfortunate kickstarter with uh some okay so apparently that part of the video was blocked because of the music so i apologize for those of you at home who got that part blocked out uh i'm sure that'll be an issue over on the other side of it so uh we'll have to see how that plays out Mich um, mississippi zombie we're i think we're still alive let me double check to see if we're actually still alive on um, yeah we're still alive i think they just blocked that little part of it see and that's the whole thing with this music that's why we have to cut so many of these off, because I wind up getting the trouble for it. But uh, Mississippi Zombie is definitely something worth checking out. Michael Metlin's Kane didn't have a video. This is the third installment of the Michael Metlin series, an adult anti-hero inspired comic book series published by Nerdnex. Get your copy today. Starting October 1st on Kickstarter, they said it couldn't be done, making a story about fetish that was powerful. That actually showed the humanity of those with fetishes, done tastefully, beautifully, and compelling without being overly sexual. They were wrong. Fetishism Tales, Volume 1, as separate, as separate issues have traveled across the U.S. and inspired and educated people from all over. I made a special video just for you guys to listen to. Hey guys, this is just for the India Advocates uh, fan base who watch this video. This won't be played on Kickstarter. So why is this Kickstarter important and why am I asking for help? Um, I could have made a comic book. I could have definitely done it about bondage and BDSM, taken what I know and made in a book that I could cash in on and just sell you guys sexuality it's not what i wanted to do not to say that sexuality is wrong in any way or enjoying it or having fantasies is wrong i wanted to make something that was powerful yes you can see we've been playful but i wanted to do something that was more than playful i wanted to do something that can inspire people and talk to people and it is always something of an amazement to me when people who read it are actually shocked at how good it is. And I can't describe the feeling that I get when I hear someone go, I was surprised it was good like that. I didn't expect it to be so good. I didn't realize everything about the BDSM culture. So I didn't take shortcuts. Even this, a lot of people have said, well, isn't this a shortcut? People miss the, the duality of characters. So. Why should you back it is because this is a book about passion and it's passion about trying to use comics to change the world. It's passion about creativity. It's passion about how I've crafted and created a story that's powerful. It's about using comics to do what they were always intended to do. Make us think, make us be entertained and make us see the world slightly different than we started than we were seeing it before we started reading the book. There are some great rewards. You guys can go see the video where I explain more about it. You guys can see the Indie Advocate shirt made its way. As you guys can see, I put a lot into this. Chuck has helped me cultivate the Kickstarter. So the time you guys see it, it'll probably look better than it does now. I, I can't express to you guys as creators and as fans of comic books that 
all that passion that you feel for comic books. I pour into every comic I make, and especially this one. Whether you get fetish, whether you aren't a fetish, whether you don't understand fetish, if you like a well-told story about characters, this is your comic book. It will not disappoint. It is that type of book. You're going to read it and feel like you read something that someone loved. And that's all I really can say about any project. If that's not enough for you, I don't know what would be. Thank you for watching the video. My name is Mr. Anderson, and I am the advocate for my own creations and the series Fetishism Tales. Volume 1, The Fetish Babies, The Collected Adventures of Barbara. So that starts October 1st. The reason that we're filming it now is because we're going to be at New York Comic Con. And I'm going to try to do a Comic Con forecast next weekend. But you will not be seeing on the show uh, another Kickstarter talk. So this is going to be going on for two weeks. So keep that in mind. When you check out Geek Girl, Sam Johnson's amazing book is coming to you guys soon. Soon as October 1st. That's right. The Crime Waves uh, chapter of Geek Girl is about to hit. It's exciting. And you guys are going to love it. I've already got to read some of it. I don't think I read the entire thing just yet. But I certainly liked the way that it was going. And it was definitely interesting. I love the uniqueness of it. And... It really was something cool. I really dug it. So, you guys, check it out. Also, check out Wolves Howl. This is being brought to us by Matthew uh, Bassell. He's the writer. And this is going to be happening on October 2nd. You guys are going to be able to check those out. Now, to get to my Kickstarter, even though I'll be at New York Comic Con, you guys can go to fetishbabies.com or writtensins.net. I will have them rerouted when the Kickstarter goes live. So that's it. That's our show for today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I thank you for the time that you've given us. And I am kind of encourage you guys to do something really cool. What's that really cool thing? Get a PDF version of one of these amazing Kickstarter comic books and get it, the actual physical copy from them at a Comic-Con and have them sign it at a Comic-Con. Now, if you notice their comic book is struggling and they need help, of course, back it. But this is definitely good for the ones who have already succeeded because PDFs are pure profit, and you'll be able to pay them back at the table. So definitely support creators. And this way, you can also check out the book, see if it's something that you do want in your collection. Some great advice, and I hope that you guys take it. My name is Mr. Anderson, and it's been a pleasure advocating for these amazing stories this evening with you. Please check them all out and spend time this weekend on the Comic-Con Highway supporting creators at your local indie comic books show and next weekend. Remember, New York Comic-Con is here. It's the end of the year for Comic-Con. After that, most people are off the road. Because after New York Comic-Con, is there a need for more cons? Well, of course there are, and there'll be a few that we'll be talking about. But I look forward to meeting you all on the Comic-Con Highway.